morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dirk Alverman from the Greifswald University Archives, and I want to give you a short impression of um, our work with Hans Kribos in the Greifswald University Archives and University Library. First of all, I will tell you something about our first ideas and motivation to work with Transcribos. Then I'll give you some impressions of our practical work and experiences. I will show you some results and will say something about our future plans. The initial impulse to work with Transcribos uh, was not a scientific challenge or a research project, but it was a more practical idea. We came into contact with Transcribos in 2015 when we were discussing the direction of our digitization projects. Between 2010 and 2015, we invested a lot of money and resources to make whole series of archival material available online in our digital library. But the ratio of effort and benefits didn't seem to be balanced. At a certain point of the development, we realized that we had a very costly service there, which had a practical value for only a small group of users. And we provided pictures of manuscripts, which could only be deciphered by a few specialists. So archives are specialist institutions for information retrieval. So what has this to do with the core task of archives, we asked. And departing from this question, it prompted us to make fundamental decision of how to proceed with our digitization projects. And this was the moment when we met Transcribos. We were initially skeptical, but the vision of an automatic enrichment of digital documents would maybe solve our dilemma, and maybe it could give us a part, maybe a part of a new digital strategy. And so we were simply curious, and we started our Transcribos experiment. What was this experiment? It's basically the Conceals Protocol Collection in Transcribos. Our goal was to read a complete series of manuscripts using the HDR and to make these translated manuscripts available as full text, searchable documents in our digital library for everybody. We chose a close series with 70,500 pages in 123 volumes in this time period, basically three writers, and on the screen you can get an impression of the type of our material and, and the scripture of one of our writers. In 2015, we transcribed the first 110 pages uh, to train our model, and we had high experiences. The results were crushing. Our first uh, hidden Markov model provided a character error rate of about 55% and word error rate, no, a word error rate 55% CER of more than 20%. And it didn't, it didn't get much better, even if we increased the amount of ground truth material. Uh, but we didn't give up, and after a certain point, I think in, uh, in the beginning, of the, at the end of 2016, uh, we got our first uh, SITLIP technology-based RNN model. And after this point, uh, our work with Transcribos changed dramatically because the HDR was so good that we could let the HDR work for us. Uh, we had only to correct uh, the results and to refeed them into the training of new models. And so um, we came into a cycle that led us to better and better results every month. You can see it. This was the point when the amount of ground truth met the graph of the CER. And after this, within a few months, we produced an amount of correct full-text documents in the same time that we needed for before a whole year. Uh, first, we worked exclusively with archivists as transcribers. After this point, um, we trained students with the first uh, with the first e-learning tools uh, to let them then correct or carry out the corrections, and this increased uh, the tempo again. Today, our basic ground truth material is uh, about 2,800 or 3,000 pages, with an average CR of about 5% for all writers, but these average results are more important for the technicians than for us. In practical work, uh, we achieve results um, 
of 3 to 4 percent on a page. Our best result last week was 1.2 percent CER on a page, and very seldom we get more than 5 percent on a page. So, results. Up to now, thanks to Transcribus, we published 20 volumes of the manuscripts online in our digital library and in a way we wanted it at the beginning of the project. My colleague, Bruno Blügel, will now show you on the screen how these documents are presented in our digital library. The viewer works with a wide range of possibilities. You can do a full text keyword research with highlighting in the document, tagging results, full text display, and you can download the documents as PDF, searchable PDFs, and EPUB files if you want to read the documents on your smartphone. So here you have one of our volumes. And then it can get EPUB or PDF as you want. And you can, of course, get uh, the full text online just as you want. Uh, and so our, every user can read this, this old handwritten text. Yeah. Okay, how did we do this? As a result of many years of commitment with the integration of OCR, you know this, in the viewer, which most digital libraries did, especially within the framework of the EOD project, the university library already had an interface to take over ALTO results in 2012. In 2016, especially for, the, uh, for our project, uh, the interface was expanded to take over imports from Transcribos, and that's kind of our workflow, uh, preparing the documents with, with the Gobi workflow software, then in Transcribos, and then we got the whole material to the digital library in the way I showed you. In this way, the Alto results, uh, input images, and searchable PDFs from Transcribus are used for the presentation in our digital library. The next steps. Um, first of all, we would like to complete our project, of course. Another idea gets more and more important for us. Now that we are able to convert images into full text and to do this very fast, um, we imagine what else we could do with the material, of course. So we would like to test the table editor with a series of handwritten statistic documents from the 19th century to get then the content exported into a database to work with the material in a more analytic way than it's possible with a full-text file. Another idea is that we would like to try other possibilities of text analysis, for example, by distant reading. That's what we do since a couple of weeks, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a funny game. Uh, we try to visual, visualize uh, results from transcribus. Here I give you an example which compares the use of Latin words in German texts with the material of two of our writers. The TechPy here works basically with the dictionaries of our HTR models. And in the center you can see uh, two time periods, two writers. In the center you can basically see the group of words both of the writers are using, and the colored areas are the words, words used only by one of the writers. So, in this case, we use an app developed uh, at the University of Leipzig by Stefan Jenicke, and uh, <coughs> we will see what, uh, what comes out with our experiments with this uh, visual visualization uh, tools. So, my time is over. I hope I could get you, you could get an impression of our work with Transcribus in Greifswald. And if you have questions, you're welcome. Thanks, Cindy. Fascinating presentation. Any questions? We have a couple of minutes for questions. So, you have three writers. You trained one HDR. For all, all of them? For all of them? And Not three, so three separate models okay. for every writer. Yeah, does it work better when you train an ATR for one? <laughs> <laughs> so, at the beginning, writer A at the most pages for writer A and writer B 
Our white C was only a minority, so the, uh, the, the special model for writing C and B was better than the, the, the complete model. Uh, and uh, we trained last week a uh, um, um, uh, complete model for our writes together, and uh, it seems that this last model we uh, created was uh, brought uh, really comparable results to, to the special models because now the uh, writers are uh, got more pages, so right B got also more pages and now it seems that the complete model uh, is more yeah, how to say it's more balanced, I would say. Mm. Yep. Yes, so. Uh, uh, um, I was just wondering, at what point, how many words or pages before you started to be able to um, switch from transcribing each page to merely correcting the errors on the, the, the handwritten transcription page? How many, because I've been working on this and, and I'm not quite there yet, and I want to know at what point. You get to that, that, that wonderful moment when you don't have to. <laughs> wonderful moment. <laughs> yeah. Two points. Uh, we had uh, about 800 pages. I don't know the number of words now. 800 pages, uh, pages transcribed. Uh, but at the same moment, there were two problems. The uh, HDR, at the same moment came the HDR model on the SIDLAB technology. It was much more better than the uh, HDR models that we had before. Uh, so maybe uh, you will reach this point now much more earlier than we did. Um, the other point was uh, the segmentation tool, the old segmentation tool, uh, was not, yeah, <laughs> I, w I was not a fan of it, and, and most of my transcribers preferred to take the bass lines uh, handcrafted. And here we have the, the new RNN model, and I think here at this point uh, came uh, the relaunch of the new segmentation tool. And you can see it. Uh, on this point, we had a lot, uh, we could very rapidly prepare documents. We had a very good model, uh, an average CR of 10% or under 10%. And then the, uh, the graph of the uh, ground truth material or the correct material uh, grows uh, dramatically with the same input of working time. Hmm? Okay, many thanks indeed to um, Dirk and Bruno for their presentation. <laughs> well, I'm pleased to uh, introduce um, Barry Dillon from the University of Antwerp. Okay, thanks. So uh, I'm Wout um, from the University of Antwerp in, uh, in Belgium, and I'm here to talk about how we use uh, or have been collaborating with uh, uh, working with um, Transcribus at the University of Antwerp. So who are we? To put a face on one of the user groups that uh, Günther was talking about earlier, we are a newly found research centre in Antwerp, the Antwerp Centre for Digital Humanities and Literary Criticism. And it, but it builds on an older tradition of, of DH research and digital scholarly editing in Antwerp, especially through the Center for Manuscript Genetics, which is also the center that is using Transcribus. What do we do? The, basically, we digitize and transcribe modern manuscripts, so draft materials of, uh, of literary works, uh, and use them to reconstruct the writing process, how the author wrote the works that she wrote. So I'm mainly interested in the creative process behind these works. And as you can see, our documents are often quite messy. And, uh, uh, well, this is, this is an example of Proust, Proust's notebook. But uh, our big project that we are working on in Antwerp is actually of, uh, of the manuscripts of Samuel Beckett. It's called the uh, Beckett Digital Manuscript Project. Basically, we're making an edition of all of Samuel Beckett's manuscripts and analyzing them to reconstruct their writing processes. Beckett wrote a lot of works, uh, so we still have a lot of ground to cover, but we already have five modules up there of manuscripts of uh, novels, short prose, poetry, and drama. And so just to give you a quick view of, of uh, how we uh, 
of our edition. It's um, uh, we digitize these manuscripts. We o- try to offer them in uh, high uh, quality images, and uh, and we offer the transcriptions also, of course, um, where we uh, um, where you can uh, read these zones in the text, uh, or you can read. Um, the entire text of this document in one go, and so it's a genetic edition. So we're working. So we're interested in the writing process, and so there's also a temporal dimension that we want to put into this edition, and that's where the compare sentences come in. We've numbered all of the sentences in our corpus uh, that allows you, uh, let's see, uh, to click on any sentence and see how it evolves from document to document. So. Uh, that's that's uh, the addition that we're that we're making of uh, of Samuel Beckett's works. So how, so you can see for di- sing- single sentences how they evolve from uh, from the first draft to the translation uh, um, um, to transcriptions uh, in uh, typewriters, etc. And uh, to the published version. So. How do we use Transcribus? Well, um, we uh, well, we came in contact with Transcribus only recently. Uh, these, this edition, the first edition, was online in, in 2011. Um, so we already had a lot of transcribed materials. And so last year we invited some of the people from Transcribus to for a workshop in our summer school in Antwerp. And since then, we've been working together to get some uh, to to build a Beckett model, basically for the um, uh, a Beckett uh, HDR model. Uh, and we did that uh, first by, uh, um, and uh, we have now about 400 pages of ground truths uh, for this uh, uh, for this HDR model. And 350 of those are used uh, using the image text tool, which was very. Uh, uh, which we were very impressed by, uh, because it allows, uh, and will be discussed uh, early, later today and tomorrow, I guess, um, it allows uh, you to, to map uh, existing transcriptions onto images and use that to, uh, to, to train the algorithm. And uh, because we already had a lot of transcriptions, this was a very efficient way of getting, uh, of getting some progress with the... Uh, with the uh, with the HDR. So right now we are at, with these 400 pages, we're at 11% character error rates for our English algorithm and uh, at 18% for the French uh, algorithm. And we have two because um, um, uh, first we tried to, to work it, to work with just a single dictionary for the entire corpus, but that was confusing and we got better, result, better results when we pre-determine uh, what kind of uh, uh, with the language that a, a document is, is written in, so that transcribus isn't trying to match it with words with two, in two languages, basically. How would li- we like to use transcribus further? Well, so we are working with modern manuscripts, which are constructed for personal use and not for dissemination or publication. So they have a lot of specific difficulties, like very bad handwriting in many cases, because it's only the author himself, in this case Beckett, who needed to be able to read his handwriting. They're also multi-layered, because there's a lot of different writing stages in a single document. They follow their own internal Logic, because the author is still reshuffling bits and pieces of text and using metamarks to link between these texts. And there's a high concentration of noise because there are a lot of diff- uh, high, heavy deletions, especially in very early drafts where the author was not yet satisfied with what he was uh, writing. So just a quick example. This is not Beckett. This is a, a Flemish author, but this is a fragment, and you can already see some of the writing, the layers here, and here it's in different colors of different writing stages. And you can see also one of an example of the metamark. The letter A corresponds to a schema, and so it's a link between these two documents. It, it's uh, the, schema, the plan on the left tells the author where this specific piece of, of text is supposed to be. And we can also see it's a fragment. It used to belong to a different document, uh, and it's been cut out. So this also gives us some idea of 
how the text was first written down and how it was reshuffled later, which is basically what we are trying to do in the first place. These are not maybe uh, specific problems for modern manuscripts, but they are uh, in... uh, uh, they are uh, present in a very high frequency in these these um, in these kind of documents, um, uh, and uh, it's aspects that transcribus is is uh, not always uh, equipped to deal with yet. So we would want to uh, work together on this, and um, so because we have a lot of these uh, materials, we wanted to see if we could try and solve this issue. So uh, we've worked together on a funding proposal for a project called Catch 2020, Computer-Assisted Transcription of Complex Handwriting. Uh, and for that project, we'd like to train and transcribe specifically on these kind of modern manuscripts with their complex and multi-layered textual dimensions and high frequency of the noise so that it would become better at transcribing them and providing TI XML output. And that's uh, important uh, for us. That's closer to the way that we as that we would uh, transcribe these documents in the TI XML. At the same time, we also want to see if we can help improve the transcription output by making it language aware. Uh, whether this would help feeding it syntactical and stylistical information, for instance, by pre-training a language model on for the algorithm on a series of published texts by the author. And we try to. Uh, develop these dimensions in tandem because we hope that they may reinforce one another. That training transcribus, how to read the document structurally would also help uh, put its pre-trained linguistic awareness better to better use. But those are all um, ideas that we've been uh, talking uh, about, and uh, and we've uh, uh, we've submitted a uh, funding proposal for. But uh, yeah, well, we hope to uh, to be able to work on that more in the future. That's it. Thanks. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, questions or comments? I really like the way you you put the, the text uh, into the internet. Is that? Can you elaborate a little bit on on the techniques that you use to show it on the website? Yes, so uh, we, tr- we transcribe the text in TIXML and we transform it in XSLT with an Apache Cocoon server. Uh, but uh, yeah, we have um, um, uh, specifically the, 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 the schema that we use is uh, you can find here. Slash should work. Uh, so u- uahost.uentropen.be slash bdmp for back of digital manuscript project. And that's our schema and there, there you can see how we transcribe all of these things that like the deletions and the additions and the meta marks, uh, how we transcribe them and so that people with similar materials can also uh, transcribe these materials in the same way and use uh, similar XSLT transformation sheets to, uh, to produce uh, similar results basically. Two girls in front. I suppose that the um, manuscripts, the back manuscripts, are, are not yet in public domain. How do you deal with, no. with, with the issues presenting them in the internet in, in its in, in original form? Yes, yes. So in, it's true, um, they are still under copyright and we have uh, agreements with the Beckett estate, but uh, we work with a, uh, with a subscription-based model uh, because of that. We try to keep the cost uh, comparatively uh, low, but and we have a lot of uh, we have demos basically uh, available on uh, for free. But um, yeah, to see the entire editions, there's a, there's a, there's a fee that pays for the license basically. Yeah, thank you for the amazing presentation and an incredibly interesting project. Uh, Fine thing because I used to uh, I used to study with Dr. Mark Nixon yes. at the International Back Foundation. Yes. Uh, so I was just wondering, more of a general editing question: uh, What do you do with all these doodles? I mean, all the paintings on the page, all the drawings. Yes. Do you edit them? Do you ignore them? Uh, do they come up? Yes, they do come up. We basically uh, we also tag them as doodles, and uh, and then we. Um, uh, then we provide some information, and then you can also do a search on uh, on them. I could probably so here. That's an example. 
So yeah, so there are there are really a, a lot of little doodles in these manuscripts, and we try to interpret them uh, and see if they have a link to the text as well. And uh, we provide descriptions of them, and uh, and you can look them all up and uh, in all of the works and uh, yeah, look at them. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. We'll just have to we'll close there. Thank you for that presentation. <laughs>the coordination project has uh, three stages. First one was to identify to-dos and improvement options for OCR tools. And from these uh, desiderata, we developed a call for proposals, which has been released in the beginning of this year. And right now we're in the uh, final stage of the reviewing. And, and then we're, a number of sub-projects will work on OCR issues, and uh, we're going to uh, merge them into a productive workflow in the end. And um, for all the sub-projects, we're going to have to provide a lot of ground truth materials um, for training purposes. And um, we have developed some kind of pilot study of doing this within Transcribus. Okay, so you could call this the big picture. So we have uh, various ground truth sources from different text providers, and they're containing either text or structural annotations or both and in very differing quality and the idea is to put them into transcribers and harmonize them and provide them as ground truth for the project. The pilot study now contains 130 documents with about 500 pages and of course if this is going to work productively we have to provide a lot more. Um, so this is an, a quick overview, overview of the of the roughly two workflows, one with existing text and the other with existing structure within Transcribus. So we're starting with importing the images. Like this, we're using the option of doing this via the private FTP. Okay, then you have the image within Transcribus. We then run Find Reader for an initial layout recognition if we have existing text, or we import the existing structure, structural informations as page XML, since this is the import format of transcribals. So this is just the screenshot of running the fine reader. So we then come up with an initial structural layout here. We have to correct this manually to make this ground truth. And if we have the, the structure available, we run some external OCR to get an initial text version, right? So this is the corrected version. And then, and this is the critical point, we have to copy the text, either the existing ground truth or the initial OCR version, um, by copy and paste, region by region. Yeah? And then we have to manually correct the text. So this is a somewhat naive approach, right? So this is not very comfortable. There would be other options which are also not very comfortable, like creating the page XML completely external, importing it into Transcribus, or doing an intermediate export and re-import. So everything not very comfortable. That's why we have a few desiderata for uh, the specific topic of ground truth uh, creation. And so, but first I have to say, or we want to say that Transcribus is a wonderful tool because it has multiple OCR options, which is great. It has support for polygonal regions, which is one of the only few tools available having that specific support. It is a 
collaborative uh, working environment, so multiple persons can work on the same text, which is also great in, in, in our setup with a lot of students' assistance. And it has TEIX part. So, as I said, for the task of ground truth creation, we would welcome um, the OCR application on specific regions of the page. So if we have manually yeah, created um, structural or, or collected structural information uh, and then run the file reader, which is still the best option for us in, in, our, in, uh, in what's available in, uh, in Transcribus for getting um, um, text for Gothic um, script. Um, but if you run the file reader, uh, OCR, all structural information is removed and replaced by the fine, reader, uh, fine reader's own structural uh, layout recognition. That's a big, big problem. Um, what we would also like to have is our, our dedicated text import functionalities, let's say on the paragraph level, this would be great. And there is the option of uh, importing mats directly into Transcribus, but the problem is that possibly existing structural annotations from within the libraries which have been created by the librarians, they are not imported, so you cannot um, take them into the tool. And this is, yeah, it would be a low-hanging fruit to um, utilize all the work done at the libraries. And, yeah, what would be great, of course, would be some kind of automatic guiding in the post-correction on the text level, right? There, there are tools available like Pocoto or uh, which, could be, which could be easily included. And um, um, it has been mentioned in the talk before, Transcribus has a TI import, a TI export, which, uh, which is great, but uh, as especially in, in the context of the, um, of the German text archive, which uh, works completely with TI, it would also be great to have TI import. And uh, this is not yet, not yet realized. Okay, some ways of collaboration between the two, let's say, communities, so OCRD world and read world, would be to set up a ground truth repository with all the sources which, uh, which are created by, by a lot of uh, scholars in, let's say, in the world. And we have published the instructions for ground truth creation that we are using internally. They are available in source at GitHub and as a, in presentation mode at this link you can find in the slides. The slides are also on GitHub, so you don't have to like, photograph them or copy them or writing down this link. And it would be nice to see your perspective on these uh, ground truth creation task, because this is by now driven by the demands of our project, but um, there are, of course, um, overlaps uh, between collecting ground truth for handwritten texts or for printed texts. And, yeah, the transcribus user documentation, um, it is there, but um, let's say there are options to improve it. So um, maybe one could move from the, from the very large one-page wiki, this is available uh, right now, to a topic-oriented um, documentation, which would make the access to specific tasks within Transcribus a lot easier for the, for the users. And for that, we propose DITA, because we have uh, very successful used it within our own projects. And it would, of course, be nice to organize a documentation source repository so everybody can uh, bring in his ideas or his specific receipts using Transcribus into the documentation. Yeah, that's was. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, questions and comments, please. Uh, comment? Uh, short comment? It will be a talk from the Australian Academy of Science. I will, will talk about it uh, tomorrow. They are following a very similar approach. And, and one of the main ideas is to, to replace the time reader uh, via an HTML so that you don't lose the structure. But he will, uh, he will talk about that tomorrow. And I'm sure it will be interesting for everyone interested in that. Okay, uh, there are no comments. Uh, 
more questions. So thank you very much indeed for the presentation. And now we have the sound of Angela Vetter from um, University of University of Augsburg. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Angela Vetter, and I'm representing a huge group from uh, the inter-academic long-term project, the Austrian Bible Translator, the Word of God in German. And I'm going to show you how we implement um, Transcribus in our annotated critical hybrid edition. Responsible for the research task force at Augsburg University, where I'm from, lies with the Bavarian Academy of Science and Humanities in Munich and the Augsburg office cooperates closely with another research group at the Berlin Brandenburg Academy of Science and Humanities in Berlin. The project duration will be 12 years. We've now have uh, finished the first one and it's divided into four individual phases of three years and it's based on materials and procedures developed in earlier BADW and BBAW projects as well as their predecessors. Among the pre-Reformation Bible translations, because there are ones, um, of the 14th century, the works of the so-called Austrian Bible translator, who considers himself a layman, occupies a special position. With the Old Testament work, the Gospel works, and the Psalm commentaries, the Austrian Bible translator's oeuvre provides um, translations and commentaries for a large part of the Bible. There are also a number of additional eschatological and heresiological treatises that can be attributed to him. His name is derived from the assumed area of his activity, the medieval duchy of Austria, where he was situated um, on the border between the dioceses of Salzburg and Passau, where most of the manuscripts were found and where the anonymous did most of his work, translate, uh, translating large parts of the Holy Scripture into the German language. The conditions of tradition are quite complex, as you can see. There are numerous manuscripts and fragments of individual parts of the oeuvre handed down. Some of them are also art historically relevant. Of the psalm commentaries alone, so far more than 70 textual witnesses are known, and we are still finding more. And of the gospel works, 27 complete manuscripts and fragments. There are also early parallel versions of some gospel work writings, origin and authorship of which still need to be termined. Besides the printed edition of the works, there are also plans for a digital version. And as a first step, since it was already sponsored by the German Research Foundation, the edition of the Austrian Bible Translator's Old Testament works um, will, as it looks like, already be published in 2018. And at the same time, the teams in Augsburg and Berlin engage in researching, analyzing, and interpreting sources and history of the gospel works and its versions, followed by making the different versions of the psalm commentaries accessible as a next step. The hybrid edition, this is our concept, of the Austrian Bible translator will publish each version of the individual text as a book. However, the oeuvre can only be presented adequately within the framework of a digital edition, since it is possible to cover all the material, including various texts and the digitized manuscript with their partially richly illustrations, which open a second level next to the text and also furthermore to realize the synopsis of the different versions of the texts. The gospel works on which we are currently working exist, as it already been said, in two versions. Soon after it was written, the text was edited and whether this also can be attributed to the Austrian Bible translator himself or another anonymous cannot be determined yet, but the first assumption seem very probable. The inter-academic project now searches for other textual witnesses, such as manuscripts and fragments, um, then identifying, publishing, and annotating the text, and the 27 textual witnesses known so far are more closely defined, and the reference manuscripts of both editorial stages transcribed. All in all, the text to be critically edited and commented compromises about 1,600 manuscript pages. 
And this is what we are doing right now, transcribing all those pages of manuscripts in Berlin because of an earlier start and the already long time existing usage of two-step. This specific software was used to transcribe the reference manuscript of the older version and its other witnesses. And this is how two-step looks like. It gives you the ability of encoding every aspect of the material text and also makes it possible to print it, the transcript into a pleasing layout in PDF. The shortcomings of two-step should not be discussed here, but of course we have decided to use XML according to the TI to realize our hybrid edition. So the we use the transcripts of the older version and bring them with a style sheet into XML and then working further with them. In Augsburg, we are working with Transcribus and this gives us the ability to work with a huge amount of text. This is how it looks like. We first transcribed about 100 pages of our reference manuscript and then we got the HTR, which is giving us the ability to work on a high performance level and also add our TI tagging in some way into our uh, the already existing markup which is given by Transcribook. The um, encoding we use is formulated in our guidelines in which we have two markup strategies, a manuscript base and a work base perspective on the text. The work based perspective is structuring the data according to the units of the abstract work, that means books, chapters, paragraphs, sentences, and so on. Aspects we can partly capture in the reference manuscript and transcribus and the manuscript in its individual material and visual appearance, that is, the structure of the single manuscript, its layout, and also the aspects of the hand in which the manuscript is written. The here defined markup is nearly completely considered, in some ways, in our transcribus transcripts, and right now we have an error rate of less than 7% in the HDR transcripts, and our student research assistants need 30 to 40 minutes, that depends on the student, um, to correct and encode a page completely, which is quite good, I think. Our guidelines are according uh, to the TI and the DTABF, it was already mentioned before, which is already a selection of the TEI. Our aim is not only to create data which is readable by humans and machines likewise, um, but also to pr produce reproduction oriented research data to make it possible for other projects to adapt our um, editing concept. Finally, for the critical editing of both versions, we are using the Oxygen XML editor, the user-friendly author mode you may all know. Um, we currently try to extend this by developing a framework for it in which additionally a toolbar is provided where the researcher can enter TI markup with the push of a button and the entire document text can thus be quickly and simply marked up with a TI conform XML to create the critical text with its four apparatuses. The framework is part of a whole package of different combinable software solution and technologies. Together these options create a digital framework called Ediarum, in which our transcribus transcriptions and other TI XML documents can be easily edited. The digital work environment uses XML database ExistDB as the central repository for its documents and the database is installed on a server and it's available online. This allows all project members to access one and the same data inventory and thus work collaboratively. Um, in the database, it is possible to create and update central indexes for the person, places, and titles we have already tagged in the um, transcribus documents. And while marking up the text, one can also index specific words, such as a person, to a register. To this end, a function was programmed that generates a list in which the person's name or place can be selected and then to be indexed. And also a website can be built um, for the project based on Exist, XQuery, and XSLT. And this website can be um, open up to the public or only to uh, research members. 
Finally, with the help of context, a print edition is automatically generated as a PDF from the TI XML document, and each TI element is given a specific formatting command through a, through a configuration file. Ediarum originally was developed by Telota of the BBAW for the critical edition of Friedrich Schleiermacher, where the work environment was used to transcribe and edit Schleiermacher's letters, lecturers, and calendar. It is currently used by a couple of different acad academy projects, but must always be customized for the individual project. In the future, that is probably six months from now, there will be a basic version of Ediarum, Ediarum Basis, for everyone who's interested. And if you're interested, you may subscribe in their mailing list. I show the address later. Our medieval um, manuscript now represents a challenge, which makes even more special adjustments necessary. So we are currently working in a cooperation of the Austrian Bible translator and Telota on Ediarum Edition. And there is a writing mistake on the um, file. Yeah which that is one of the aims, could be used by similar projects for the critical editing of medieval text and their witnesses in the future. And now that was very fast, and I thank you for your attention and await your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments, please? I mean, I've got a question. Uh, <laughs> And the to. relationship between the, sort of the print edition and the digital edition, do you have any sense of the usage in terms of you know, print sales versus the number of people who might download documents? Yeah, um, the print edition um, is focused solely on the um, text as itself, the work text for the usage in, um, in, in humanities, and our digital edition is trying to get out to everyone, to the public, and if it's possible to download the critical edited text there, this is not clear at this stage because of the relation to the um, publishers. That's always a tricky thing, but we are trying to do that because it would be senseless to show everything up on the web, but not the critical text. That's a problem I understand very well. Yeah. <laughs> Right, well, if there are no questions or comments, we'll once again say thank you very much for the And our final presentation is, um, is a film. Um, as Celio Hernandez um, from Spain, who I think is working with the Polytechnic University of Valencia, um, will not be here until tomorrow, so we can save any comments or questions for when he arrives. It also means that we'll probably get to coffee on time. So thank you to all our um, presenters for um, being so good in um, sticking to the time limit. First of all, we would like to thank the organizers of this Transcribus User Conference for allowing us to present, in our case, rather than experiences of use, proposals for development and aspirations for us to become users. The Prolope Research Group is partly responsible for the edition of Lope de Vega's theater. Lope de Vega is a Spanish playwright who lived between 1562 and 1635. He was a very prolific writer, a leading figure for the creation and development of drama in the so called Spanish Golden Age, the most brilliant period in the history of Spanish literature. According to his and his contemporary testimonies, Lope may have written up to 1,500 or even to 1,000 plays. Nowadays, over 300 pieces of certain authorship have been preserved, thanks to their having been transmitted through orthograph manuscripts over 40, handwritten copies, and most of all, printed copies. The theater of the Golden Age, and more precisely that of Lope de Vega, constitutes a fundamental chapter in the Spanish and European cultural history. This entails an enormous wealth of bibliographic heritage, 
that has remained alive for the centuries and is still alive in study programs, publishing enterprise, bookstores and networks, as well as in theater, not only in Spain, but around the world. The theater of the Golden Age was a cultural mass phenomenon. Theaters were built all over Spain and productions were sold out not only during holidays, but also during working days. This involved a huge amount of plays, and handwriting and printed copies were needed for representation and reading. As a result, millions of copies were produced between the 16th and the 19th centuries. This is why the theater of the Golden Age and Lope de Vega are so interesting, not only because of its intrinsic quality, but also because of the sheer massive quantities of documents involved in its transmission. The most important collection of this enormous heritage is preserved in the Biblioteca Nacional de España, about which we will speak in a minute. Pero Lope has already published on paper more than half of Lope de Vega's preserved work, 175 comedies. Today, Pro Lope is one of the best funded research groups in Spain in the field of the humanities. In 2014, we published an issue of our annual Lope de Vega devoted to digital edition, a path we have been wanting to pursue for some time. We have participated in basic XML DEI digital editing projects, such as Canon 60, as well as in highly innovative digital critical edition, such as La Dama Boba, in collaboration with the University of Bologna and the National Library of Spain. The alliance of Prolope with the Biblioteca Nacional de España, as well as with other institutions such as the Compañía Nacional de Teatro Clásico, Classical Theatre National Company, and the Instituto Cervantes, an institution similar to the Goff Institute of Germany, is key for the development of our projects. All of them are well known and highly respected institutions and our partnership with them will help disseminate the results of our research. Prolope entered with as a more partner through its relationship with the Biblioteca Nacional and its relationship in turn with PRHO G. Santa of the Universitat Politécnica de Valencia. The Biblioteca Nacional de España preserves more than 30 million documents, including the most important classical collection of Golden Age theater in the world. The Spanish National Library wants to get involved in tasks and research projects that contribute to the use of its funds, available to the public not only at its headquarters in Madrid, but also through the Biblioteca Digital Hispánica. Hispanic Digital Library. More than 3 million users visited the DNE website, with almost 6 million visits, and visited or consulted almost 41 million pages. The Biblioteca Digital Hispanica offers 180,000 digitized documents, composed of more than 22 million digitized pages, accumulating more than 1 million visits by 587,000 individual users. Some 500,000 downloads of the documents have been made. All this data come from reports of the institution covering the year 2016. But in addition to the data, it's important to underline the active policy of involvement of the Biblioteca Nacional de España in research projects, in full awareness of its duty as a public institution 
in the digital age scenario. Their entire division of digital development, beginning with the Biblioteca Digital Hispanica, is developing a continuous work of digitization as well as updating the web and the semantic catalog BNI Datos. The newly created BNI Lab is proof of the library involvement and interest in digital development. The partnership between Prolope and Biblioteca Nacional de España is a two-way path. At Prolope, we use the library digitized funds for our digital critical edition, which will return to the library as processed and culturally and scientifically the right material for the Biblioteca Digital Hispanica. In addition, and here we return to transcribers, Prolope wants, in accordance with the Biblioteca Nacional de España, to create or develop tools for digital critical editing to do its own editions, but also to put those editions in the BNI lab and make them available to all researchers who decide to use them. This is the basis of the adaptation and adaptability proposal that Prolope would like to make regarding the platform, and especially the Transcribus Editor section. Many of the current future and functions of Transcribus are of great interest to philological text editor. Being able to have an image file manager in combination with a XML GEI editor, and all this in a collaborative platform, will be ideal for our project and in our workflow, and could also be an optimal solution for the realization of digital critical editions based on XML TEI by the philological community in general. Obviously, all the utilities that, that Transcribus offers for the management of documents of already made transcription with the version control, works, etc., are of great interest to us, and must be said that the Biblioteca Nacional which will be our main image provider, already has experience in the use of the platform. The image processing system of the manuscripts, layout and presentation for transcription in Transcribus are idea, are idea for a good transcription of the text and, at the same time, allows Prolope and any editor to create image and text file perfectly aligned and connected to each other. The manual transcription is safer both because the editor will not escape lines accidentally and because in the output a synaptic visualization of the text and an automatically synchronized image can be presented. In this then, work with manuscript or also in our case with printed matter, in plain view on the computer with an image divided into lines and underline the baseline some functions image rotation for really of some fragments written vertically like the 1C in the example and a lower section of the screen that is already the XML TEI editor is the ideal solution. Let's now focus on the editor. One of the difficulties for the fast implementation of the edition with XML TEI already admitted by the experts it's to have only few editing tools and because of that of complex use. That is why the customization and specificity of the editing screen for our critical text editing tasks should work at maximum performance. We think it will be important, although perhaps not strictly necessary, for the editor to be a graphic editor who responds to the WYSIWYG philosophy. What you see is what you get, which will undoubtedly be friendlier for our potential collaborators. In our case, for the theater of the Spanish Golden Age, which is theater written in verse, that will be with all the sections of text and TEI tags that this theater includes, lists of characters or dramatis personae, stage indications, names of the characters speaking, speech, stanzas, etc. In conclusion, 1. Could Transcribus be developed to become a philological editing tool and platform with accommodation into or access from BNLab? 2. 
could it be conceived for use by different research groups, even if the signature of an amount or some kind of authorization is required? Or alternatively, three, could it be offered in open codes without authorization and developed and customized by and for different projects? If these were the case, it could become a public domain XML TEI editor that would offer an innovative solution in its specificity and modularity for the philological community that would be approved by the Biblioteca Nacional de España and hosted by BNE Lab to utilize, utilize and reuse the many digitized images of text available through the institution. The first beneficiary will be a very broad biological community, but above all, the final beneficiary of these scientific and cultural products will be a linguistic and cultural community of more than 400 million native Spanish speakers, the largest in the world after Mandarin Chinese. Thanks for your attention. One short comment from my side because there was this question concerning TEI editor. Um, of course, TEI plays an important role, and that's the reason why we have included the export. We also had the request that TEI sh should maybe be included for import. Um, what I can say is uh, concerning this question, we said from the very beginning that Transcribus will not be a TEI editor. So there are editors on. On, on the market and uh, I think they do a good job and what we saw from um, Angela was very much in the direction we are thinking that basic markup is done in Transcribus but more specific markup is done somewhere else in the project. Of course maybe we could find better ways um, to, to make the export more flexible, more configurable and, and all these things are somewhere on the list, that's okay, but, um, but not a real editor. I think that's, that's not our main focus. Our main focus is to, to really uh, give you the chance to, to create text with basic, basic uh, text. So that's our idea, but of course. <laughs> Thank you.